introduce Andrew Svetlov. Svetlov. And yeah, I think you know what he's talking about better than me because you are here. Uh, I'm just here for the next talk, but I'm very interesting, uh, interested. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, guys. Um, I'll try to uh, make a simple enough introduction for IOCTP. Uh, I am uh, Andrew Slov. I'm a uh, uh, Python core developer. Use uh, Python for uh, 16 years and co developer for last four ones. Uh, I uh, took a part in async IO development uh, as committer. Uh, and I, now I'm a uh, main maintainer of, for IOHTP and after all, that dozen other libraries under IO libs umbrella like. Um, Postgres driver, uh, 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 several uh, HTTP extensions, uh, Redis driver, well, Redis is not 100% prime, uh, Kafka, whatever. So, uh, trust me, I know something how to work with uh, SNKO code. Uh, why? Up, 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 sorry. Uh, I lost the focus. Yeah. Uh, why do we need uh, uh, asynchronous code at all? Uh, that's very easy. Now is an uh, age of microservices, right? And uh, let's uh, imagine classic situation. We have a client. It's uh, is a browser or um, client which. Uh, goes through API. Uh, we have a front side, and the front side communicates with a lot of microservices, uh, internal microservices and external uh, services like Twitter, GitHub, uh, Facebook, whatever. Um, and uh, uh, with this architecture, uh, we usually should uh, to perform many parallel. HTTP requests from our front side to uh, microservices, collect data back, uh, um, transform it, and uh, return to user. Um, and uh, we can use threads, and uh, we can use asynchronous uh, code. These threads, uh, casual machine can support about 1,000 threads, um, um, but uh, with async IO, with uh, lightweight threads, uh, amount increased to million. Uh, powerful se server uh, may support more than uh, thousand threads, maybe ten, hundred thousand, as top limit. Uh, but it's still uh, low limitation. Uh, async IO uh, and any asynchronous network. Uh, uh, allows to scale uh, more, allows to do parallel, uh, more parallel work. Uh, in only if uh, your uh, parallel threads are IO bound, it does help uh, with CPU bound, CPU heavy task, uh, tasks all, but uh, it helps uh, very well uh, if you uh, try to uh, IO. So, uh, HTTP uh, is a uh, uh, library dedicated to work with web uh, to handle uh, HTTP from both sides, uh, server and client. It uh, supports uh, persistent connection, uh, web sockets out of the box, and many, many other things. Uh, I'll describe uh, later. Uh, the library has three years long story. Uh, at very, very beginning, it was part of uh, async IO. Uh, in those time, it was called Tulip. Uh, but uh, Guido asked to rip it out. We instructed it into a new project, uh, HTTP, and it was a good decision because uh, IHTTP was uh, very young in those days. It changes uh, quickly. 
uh, and uh, uh, we released 24, tw uh, 22 releases uh, so far. Uh, it's much faster than uh, IO HTTP release cycle. Uh, uh, 100 and uh, half contributors, uh, good code coverage, so it's mature enough library. Uh, client API. Uh, client API uh, somehow looks like request. It's not a, a total API copy, but inspired on. Uh, well, uh, I believe everybody know how requests work. It's the, maybe the most popular third party library for Python. Um, uh, we uh, make uh, request get call, get response back, uh, ask for response status code, uh, get a response body as text, as JSON, as uh, binary files, uh, streaming and so on. Uh, how to translate it in IO HTTP? Uh, no way, sorry. Uh, that's because um, uh, in IO HTTP we don't want to encourage um, bad, no, not blocking, uh, bad usage practice. Uh, um, we had uh, an analog, it's it still work, I can write it, but it's deprecated. Uh, let's go. Uh, uh, re uh, request has a session co uh, concept. Uh, session is a uh, mm, container for cookie storage and for uh, connection pool. And uh, you uh, can uh, perform get request uh, on session, return response back and ask for uh, response text. Uh, uh, session supports keep alive. Session supports uh, cookies. Uh, keep alive uh, for free may make your system of, uh, I don't know how, three, five, seven times faster. It depends on, uh, uh, on your net net networking and uh, how long uh, your uh, server uh, is from client. But uh, I highly recommend to use session uh, request uh, every time. Uh, unfortunately, mm, the first page which uh, uh, user uh, documentation page which uh, user look uh, when read request documentation uh, don't encourage session usage. So the, the most part of uh, request code, a code which operates with request is not optimal from my experience. Uh, now we have uh, HTTP client code. Uh, we have a session, HTTP session. Uh, we have a mm, uh, get response, but uh, you see, uh, uh, we use async with, it's asynchronous context manager for handling uh, resources. Uh, for uh, uh, gracefully closing all open resources, open connection, open response, uh, everything. And it's async because uh, it works uh, in asynchronous way. Uh, and uh, uh, we have a response here. Uh, mm, for uh, uh, reading response body, we should use await syntax uh, again because um, you usually you have uh, header uh, uh, response header immediately and uh, reading the whole response time or uh, uh, response body or uh, reading by chunk by chunk takes time it uh, requires io re requires input out uh, communication with server so uh, we require a wait here. Uh, and now I want to say a couple of word, uh, words about uh, coroutines. Mm, it's a relatively complex uh, concept, but for casual user, uh, it uh, uh, can be divided uh, to 
uh, very simple rules how to use it. So, uh, Cortin is a function which is not dev, but async dev. If you see async dev, it means you uh, uh, have a deal with, sorry, uh, with coroutine. Uh, if you have to call coroutine, put await uh, keyword before, uh, before the call, uh, like uh, await sleep or you see, await function. And if uh, your function contains awaits inside, it should be coroutine itself. So the function itself should be async dev also. Uh, that's it. Uh, next uh, thing, um, the power of uh, uh, asynchronous approach, uh, asynchronous way for making pro uh, programs. Uh, if we need to fetch uh, several um, resources in parallel, uh, we can uh, create several tasks. Task is a let wait thread and execute it in parallel, wait for all tasks together, uh, for all results, or uh, use another uh, async IO API for getting uh, results uh, as they are complete, uh, in com completion order. And uh, uh, our uh, Fetcher uh, will uh, will try to fetch both uh, Google Chrome and Python or uh, home pages in parallel. Uh, what does it mean uh, uh, in time uh, point of view? Uh, synchronous code execute three fetches one by one in, syn in sequence, and obviously it's long. Uh, if we start three real threads uh, in Python, thanks to Gil and other uh, communications, um, the, the, uh, these threads executed in parallel, but uh, gray uh, part of this graph is a waiting state when program does work, but waiting for switch for Gil uh, releasing and other things. Uh, async code uh, execute everything in the same uh, thread. Uh, usually, it's the main thread, uh, but uh, switch micro thread, switch between tasks, uh, and it does it very quickly uh, without need for um, operation system context uh, switch. And uh, thanks to it, it supports uh, million billion tasks easy. Uh, next thing, uh, what you should know when you uh, uh, works with uh, client API is timeouts. Mm, why? Uh, because uh, every uh, request, every try to uh, acquire data from server uh, may hands for very long period, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, uh, without disconnection, uh, exception, without any uh, information, uh, uh, any suggestion what target ser uh, server is done. Very often you uh, get exception quickly, but sometimes you can. Uh, why? Because internet works in this way. We, we cannot so uh, change. Uh, internet protocol, but uh, we, we can uh, wrap uh, our calls under timeout context manager and uh, it's safe. Uh, uh, so I recommend to use timeouts everywhere. Uh, and context manager is very convenient uh, for this. A web socket, this is very uh, simple example how uh, to use web sockets. Um, Instead of uh, saying session get or session uh, post, uh, you uh, use uh, session uh, WebSocket connect, point, uh, WebSocket endpoint, uh, get a WebSocket object, uh, iterate our 
uh, messages in WebSocket. Async4 is asynchronous iteration. It uh, may wait for next message if it's still not available. Uh, and uh, on waiting, uh, um, async IO loop will switch to other tasks, pending tasks. Um, when a message is ready, we check for message content. If it's query for closing, we close WebSocket. Uh, and also we do something like ping pong uh, communication. Uh, this is a very uh, base, basic uh, pattern and uh, uh, all WebSockets uh, client code looks like this. Uh, this is uh, for client side. Uh, now, server. It's about server. Uh, I believe everybody uh, knows how uh, to write Hello World in Django. In, in Django, uh, uh, you have a view. It's a, it's a function which accepts a request and return response. Uh, you uh, file a URL uh, map. Uh, which uh, maps uh, uh, for uh, URL to uh, view function and execute it via Django manage command. Uh, in IHTP we have almost the same. Uh, when we developed uh, HTTP web server, high level web, web API, uh, we tried to uh, uh, be uh, very close to, uh, to Django, Flask, or uh, Battle, uh, to Classic with GI frameworks. O only uh, with one exception. Our code is asynchronous. So we have also view. Uh, it's called web, uh, web handler in uh, HTTP documentation, which accepts request, returns response, uh, we have an application, uh, register route for uh, view, run everything. Uh, but, uh, see, our index is not bare function, it's a uh, coroutine, which means we can do asynchronous work inside coroutine. And uh, the most uh, obvious way is we can request uh, another resources, via client API. Uh, uh, we, we can uh, do WebSocket communications and we, uh, in opposite to classic WSGI uh, framework, we shouldn't return uh, answer as quick as possible. We can wait. Um, you, end user, client, uh, obviously, uh, will uh, not see an answer quickly, but it does have uh, a server. Uh, waiting inside our web handler does stop other handlers uh, if they have something to do. Uh, it's the main and the biggest uh, difference uh, between uh, IOGP and all other WSGI framework. Uh, I don't know how many uh, WSGI frameworks uh, there are, but uh, um, ma many uh, dozens, uh, at least. Uh, Tornado. Tornado is also a synchronous uh, framework, as well as Twisted. Uh, but uh, Tornado built on another uh, uh, concept. In Tornado, we have a Tornado request handler, uh, and user should derive from it and uh, override get me method uh, or post method. Mm, it, uh, it works. Uh, I don't prefer this way, but can live with it. Um, but um, we found that um, utilizing uh, view Web, oh, web handler concept is much easier for understanding for end users. Uh, that's why we built uh, asynchronous asynchronous code in this way, uh, not in Tornado. Uh, but web sockets 
for client uh, for server looks almost the same as uh, client looks like. Uh, the only um, difference we should uh, create WebSocket response prepared from requ uh, request and iterate uh, our messages from WebSocket response. Almost the same. Uh, the only thing what you uh, should keep in mind is um, like all other network communications, uh, you have to uh, uh, have some uh, 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 mechanism for handling um, uh, timeouts because WebSockets uh, can stop working without uh, any notification uh, for a long time. And uh, pro uh, pro uh, programmatic ping and uh, ping pong uh, communication can uh, prevent these hands. Inf inform server uh, quickly that uh, client is connected. Um, uh, what I uh, can suggest for uh, how to develop uh, single uh, programs effectively. Uh, at first, uh, run, test, run, uh, or uh, create your development uh, environment as single process. Uh, after creating your code, after debugging it, testing, uh, you can deploy uh, it on uh, in different Docker containers and different process on different nodes uh, hidden. Uh, all uh, under, say, Nginx in uh, reverse proxy mode. Uh, but for development, it's much, much easier to uh, put everything into the same process. Uh, wow. Sorry, I didn't expect it. Ubuntu. Uh, <laughs> it's epic fail. Uh, no, it's not suspended. Uh, I to move it. To what? Uh, to remove the, the dual screen and then make it back. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, uh -huh. so sorry for the, for this. Uh, Uh, so, uh, uh, HTTP code does require uh, 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 tools like Celery. You just can create a long running task, fork new thread inside your program. It's much more easier. Sometimes you need persistent uh, pending tasks which will be uh, restarted if uh, task execution uh, uh, has failed, but uh, it's a rare situation. Uh, in the most case, you can just create new task uh, in the uh, server and that's it. And uh, you can uh, do very long uh, communication inside uh, web handler. It's very convenient. Uh, next uh, simple thing. Um, uh, often you, if you forget to close uh, gracefully your response or do some uh, uh, weird stuff, you will get uh, an exception like, uh, or it's not exception, it's actually a warning. A future exception was never tried. It's wrong. It's uh, programming error. Uh, you see runtime error as w w what exception was pushed into future uh, before getting a result. Uh, but uh, have no idea where in the uh, code it was happened. So uh, run our uh, program with Python async IO debug environment flag and you will see trace back uh, to, uh, to the uh, point where um, uh, bad code was created, uh, where object was created. No, uh, uh, also, I highly recommend to you 
pass loop everywhere or don't pass it at all. Uh, why it's important? Um, it's important uh, because uh, easy to uh, write test with explicit loop. Uh, uh, I told uh, about a client session. Uh, use it for sharing state and for keeping uh, keep, uh, uh, open connection for uh, supporting keep alive uh, net network pattern. Uh, we have uh, one session. We, we have uh, several tasks for fetchers. We wait for all these task completion. Uh, that's it. Uh, how to write tests? Uh, easy, but create new loop in, uh, for every test in setup, uh, disable a default loop, uh, and uh, on teardown close the loop. Uh, also, uh, test function in, in test uh, framework should be regular function, not coroutine, so this trick uh, can help very well. Uh, in uh, IHCP we have a decorator which do, does uh, uh, th this call run until complete, uh, but uh, for understanding, we have uh, we should have uh, uh, coroutine inside regular function and run this coroutine. Um, why uh, is important to disable uh, global loop? Um, because uh, with global loop enabled, uh, we, we can start a task in one test finish test successfully, uh, execute <laughs> more tests, two or ten, and uh, on uh, 12 uh, test execution, your task from the first test may fail because they, sh they share uh, the same loop. Uh, uh, disabling uh, default loop makes tests really separate. And uh, that's why important to uh, pass loop everywhere. Uh, to don't clash uh, between uh, two te uh, different tests. Uh, this example how it works with PyTest framework. Uh, honestly, I uh, prefer PyTest nowadays. Uh, I tried unit tests for long, for uh, about a decade. Uh, but switch to PyTest. Finally, we, we have a PyTest HTTP plugin and uh, everything looks easy and short. Um, uh, we have an application, we, we have a test client with a get uh, post uh, method and other. And uh, you see, uh, we create application, pass a handler uh, in it uh, and uh, perform test uh, request to our uh, test server, uh, analyze result back. Uh, it's very, very easy and very, very convenient to uh, have uh, tested and testing coroutines in uh, the same thread. Uh, you don't have to start separate thread for starting application or separate process. You have all, all together and uh, you can easily uh, insert uh, import PDB, PDB set trace, or, or what do you prefer for the uh, debugging your file, file, uh, failure. So it's, I found it's very convenient. Uh, and the last one, uh, what I want to mention, it's from uh, Stack Overflow question asked uh, yesterday. Uh, a guy created code like this. Uh, this is a Mongo client, MongoDB client. And uh, it works uh, manual run. But uh, when he started to write unit tests for this, test hands. Those hands. What? Why? Uh, just because I think I motor client uh, accepts loop. And it was coupled to uh, uh, event loop, default event loop. Uh, first test finished, second test started, uh, created, an, uh, created another loop, but uh, asking for finding 
uh, data using uh, motor client uh, coupled to old, not used uh, anymore loop uh, is a bad idea. Uh, it has. But uh, what to do? Request has app. Uh, it's an application. Application is a dict like object. You can push everything uh, into this namespace and uh, uh, save. Uh, when uh, create an application, we create one hot client, push it into our application namespace, register cleanup for graceful uh, shutdown connection to Mongo. Uh, this is the same you can do with da databases, with everything. It's very uh, good. Uh, register uh, uh, cleanup on uh, cleanup signal, and that's it. So uh, let's keep this section. It's not very interesting, uh, actually. Questions? Are there any questions or comments? Uh, am I correct that uh, disabling global event loop, main event loop, makes uh, execution uh, not a sync anymore for testing? So, uh, so that uh, test platform will be executed uh, one by one and not uh, sharing the same, uh, the same thread, not sharing the main thread, just to simplify debugging. Mm. There are ways to use uh, another approach. So you, so you, you can uh, recreate uh, event loop uh, and register the new event loop uh, as default every time for every test. Uh, de uh, default event loop will be new instance, but I found it's error prone. Sorry. Uh, the the, the uh, it's maybe the heaviest way, but the m most safe way to pu uh, pass loop everywhere. Maybe I'm wrong, sorry, but it's my, my opinion and my experience. Okay, we have another question here. So uh, I was doing um, benchmarking of a service on a synchronous framework and on AO HTTP. And what I've noticed is that I can have a 16 millisecond latency on each request for like say 20,000 requests a second. And when I double the load, so 40,000 requests a second, it's still the same latency. So what happens? So it appears that, you know, it, it was still free CPU uh, earlier, but you know, I've doubled, I've doubled the load, but it's still the same latency. Did, did you observe something like that or? No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, I need to uh, take a look on this benchmark more carefully. Okay. Sorry, uh, cannot predict what. Okay, so I will talk to you later, I hope. Thanks. More questions? Here. Yeah, I mean, just a question. I had a few other questions. Just a question for a previous questioner. Was the latency actually an was it in async IO or was it a network latency or in the network stack? Just, just a, a question. Uh, um, very interesting talk. Uh, um, um, I do quite a bit of web apps. Python has a great story in terms of writing uh, uh, web apps. Really easy to write a web app and an absolute pain in the neck to deploy them. So you can write an app very simply in Flask, in Django, in any other of the frameworks. And then once you deploy it, you have to start configuring Nginx, you have to start, uh, you know, salary for your long running tasks. And you have um, Redis for your temporary, your, te your caching. And you have lots of different components with fragile connections between them. So the whole thing becomes a bit of a nightmare and uh, uh, very fragile and hard to debug. So uh, HTTP Async IO looks like it can simplify the whole uh, thing a great deal. Um, you, talk, you mentioned getting rid of salary um, because you can do the long-running task. 
um, using the async framework. That's great, but I, I'm just um, wondering why you suggested um, st deploying behind Nginx. Can't we just use the async HTTP um, 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 server as the... As front, front uh, server, right? Uh, 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 yeah, as a production server. So that's, that's one question. Another question is HTTP2 support. Uh, okay. Uh, HTTP can be used as uh, just web server without reverse proxy. Uh, but uh, for production, I recommend to uh, push it uh, be, uh, behind uh, Nginx. Why? Uh, first, uh, you usually have to uh, have a static file files, if it's a requirement, Nginx do it much better than Python. We, we have the static file support, but uh, for real performance, uh, use Nginx. And uh, another uh, point, uh, much more important, uh, Nginx uh, has a very long uh, story uh, for uh, uh, pre preventing uh, uh, mal mal malwares. Uh, for preventing attacking code. Uh, it's done by limiting buffer size. Uh, 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 it has uh, very good experience in this area. Uh, we tr tried, uh, tried the best, but uh, I don't uh, have, uh, not evidence, but I'm not 100% uh, sure we have no holes for uh, attackers. Uh, about HTTP2, uh, we have plans, but not uh, ha have no, no, nothing uh, ready yet. Uh, there is a pull request, but it's still not ready, sorry. We have one more question here. Um, hi, thank you for the talk. Um, so my question is a bit more like, do you have any big features in mind to add to the library, meaning that if there is a roadmap or these kinds of things. Our, our, our roadmap, uh, well, <laughs> uh, we are not so formalized <laughs> to have roadmaps, uh, but um, uh, HTTP is hosted on GitHub. Uh, we have issues, uh, and that's it. Uh, in, uh, uh, Near, near targets are HTTP2 support, performance, and nested sub-applications, and fixing our bugs. Uh, users uh, find it, <laughs> of course. So, this is. Any other question? If this is not the case, please thank again, Andrew. <laughs>